Tanner, Tech, Tanner, Tanner, Tech, Tanner, Tech, Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Mountain biking is my favorite sport. I love being able to go into the mountains, enjoy nature, and get some good exercise. And for a while now, I've been wanting to try mountain biking at night because you get to see some cool wildlife that you don't otherwise see during the day. And it also opens up a bigger amount of time in my schedule to go biking, because right now it gets dark around 4.30, 4.45. So I was looking on Amazon trying to find some different lights to go mountain biking at night with, and some of these lights were so expensive. I mean, on the cheap end, it was like $80, and they didn't even look like that high quality of lights. So I figured that I'd build my own lights to go mountain biking with, and that it would be a lot better than the ones that they were selling on Amazon. So this project cost me around $30 to make. Let's get started. To start, I first needed a light. Now this light is really cool. It's an LED chip that's 50 watts with a lens assembly on top of it. This cost about maybe 13 or $14. This heat sink looked good to me. This is from an old computer that I took apart a while back. But the perfect thing about it is that it's small and it's the perfect size to mount the light on. In order to mount this LED properly on the heatsink, I'm going to need to do a few things. The first thing is to mount it mechanically, and I'm going to do that by drilling four holes in the heatsink that are spaced like this metal bracket that holds the lens in place. And then I'm going to tap those holes. This got this new tap from Harbor Freight. With all the holes properly tapped, we can now move to mounting the LED to the plate. For that, we're going to be using this thermal paste. This improves the heat conductivity between the back of the LED and the heat sink. So we'll squirt some of that on there, mount the LED, mount the lens, and use the top of the lens to secure it in place mechanically. Now I really like the way that this light turned out. It looks very professional, and it's actually pretty light. So now I need to figure out how to mount this to my helmet. I'm going to mount this light to my helmet as opposed to my bike, so that way wherever I look will be illuminated. Now the most obvious way that I can see to mount it on here would be the GoPro mount that's already on my helmet. I just need to make an adapter that will mount the back of the heatsink to the GoPro mount. When I first got this heatsink, there was a fan bolted onto it and have four screws. Now I'm not going to be needing this fan because I'm going to be riding and that passive airflow is going to cool the heat sink. So we can instead mount a fan to the back. And I figured that I can just 3D print a mounting piece and use the same holes that are on the fan to mount the 3D printed part to the heat sink. So to make this adapter I got out Fusion 360 and I designed a cool part. This is the build process. Getting it all prepared on Slicer, and it's ready to print. It took a couple of failed attempts at printing before I got the printer dialed in right, but my final part looks great. And it will mount to the back of the heatsink, and this precisely matches the mount to the back of the GoPro, which means that it will fit nicely onto the mount on the helmet. Well, the light is securely mounted to the helmet, and it looks pretty good. It's a little bit front heavy, which might be a problem, but other than that, it should be fine. I'm going to now take this wire, uh, secure it to the LED bulb, and then run it to my backpack where there will be a 22 volt lithium battery and a boost converter to step that voltage up to the 31 volts that this light requires to run properly. Alright, so I have the light hooked up somewhat. I have one wire coming down to the end and it's hooked up to my new Kaiweats power supply. So right now it's at 25 volts. 
I'm going to show you how bright this thing gets when it's at 30 volts. And this isn't even its max power. Now to control the power of this LED, how bright it is, I'm going to be mounting this potentiometer on here. This potentiometer is going to be connected through these two wires back in the harness to my boost converter. I just desoldered the small potentiometer. It's already on it. And I put two wires coming out where the potentiometer used to be. I'm going to have these going through the wire harness to this new potentiometer. This boost converter's max output voltage with that potentiometer in place is around 32.68 volts, which is perfect because it's perfectly bright then, and the max voltage of this LED chip is 34 volts. Let's glue this on and solder it together. Now that this is in place, it'll be easy to reach up and change the brightness of the LED. Now let's build the box that will house the boost converter and the battery. This box should be pretty good for housing the electronics. I have all the electronics wired up. It's not too complicated. So over here I have my battery with the XT60 connector. That then flows into the blue box. This goes into the power in input on the boost converter. And then we have these two wires coming out of the power output. Keep in mind the polarity. Going out through the black sleeve into the light. We also have these other two wires coming out of the black sleeve. This goes to the potentiometer, and these go into the two potentiometer pins. This is a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. So it looks really nice if I close it up. I use zip ties to secure it, and it works great. Now that this is working correctly, I'm just gonna wait till nighttime hits to test it out in the dark and test it out in the mountains. This will be cool. Well, thank you for watching. I had a lot of fun making this video. This LED worked great for the mountain bike ride. It got a little bit cold, but it was very fun. This illuminated the trail perfectly, and the only trouble I had was the potentiometer broke off. I should have used a little bit more super glue. Well, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for next time.